Welcome, welcome to Celebrate Aging. We're preparing for Ecumen Detroit Lakes celebration of 50 years of serving the community. And this is the very beginning that we'd like to share with you. Never underestimate the power of one. In the 1950s, Norman Midthune worked as a welfare caseworker for Becker County. In an editorial written by Wes Meyer for the Detroit Lakes Tribune in May of 1962, Midthune is credited to have pounded the drum for a community retirement home. Midthune had opportunity to speak to the Detroit Lakes JCs about his concerns for the gap of care that was in this community, and his concerns resonated in the hearts of several community leaders. JC leader Earl King, who was chair at the time of the JCs, secured the assistance of Dr. Virgil Watson and Dr. John Rutledge as they sought to survey the lakes area to see if there was indeed a need for a home. The Minnesota State Board of Health affirmed the need for a community retirement home in its rural areas. So armed with the conviction that a community retirement home would serve a great purpose, the JCs sought out other organizations to see if there could be a way to make this purposeful idea a reality. Three organizations were immediately drawn to this proposed project. The Detroit Lakes Chamber of Commerce, the Detroit Lakes Industrial Development Corporation, and the Red River Valley Board of Charities of the ALC, which was the Augustana Lutheran Churches. The Red River Valley Synod had a history of creating and managing nursing homes. The closest to the Detroit Lakes area was Bethany Home in Alexandria. At this time, Reverend Walford Nelson, who was serving Trinity Lutheran Church in Detroit Lakes, was a member of the ALC. Trinity Lutheran Church was actively seeking to build a new church and to sponsor a ministry. The planning and building of a retirement home seemed the perfect fit. Longtime resident Barney Allen offered for sale 19 acres along Madison Avenue right across from where the new Detroit Lakes High School was being built. So Trinity purchased the land in 1958, keeping five acres for a new church and parking lot and 14 acres were then purchased by the Red River Valley Synod to provide land for a community retirement home. As those interested came together to put this idea, this dream on paper, they wrestled with what do you call it? A rest home, a home for the aged, a nursing home, a retirement center, a community home? The newspaper was diligent to printing many articles about those who were committed to planning this place, and all of the names were used at one time or another. But though the name seemed elusive at this time, the ideas about this place quickly took shape. The place would be a nonprofit facility. Becker County would help set the rate by using a point system. Every care point a resident received was given a cost. In that way, care would be individualized and the cost would be appropriate. The home would be open to all people. Though the Red River Valley Synod was a Lutheran organization, quote, the home would be strictly a community home and that all races and faiths would be welcome and that their respective clergy would be welcome to minister to their spiritual needs. Reverend Nelson of Trinity was quoted as saying, under modern conditions, this home will offer to the well-to-do as well as those of small means, comforts and care that make the evening of their lives peaceful and secure. A. O. Hoghaug, Executive Secretary of the Becker County Welfare Board, agreed that there was a great need for a community retirement home in Detroit Lakes. He shared with those who were surveying that he would place 40, he could place 40 to 50 elderly people in a nursing home at the present time. And so it began. For the obvious need witnessed firsthand in the welfare department that was shared with the JCs, who spoke of it to the chamber and then picked up by Trinity, who had the ear of the Red River Valley Synod, Ecumen Detroit Lakes was a seed that was ready to plant. Now, to prepare the soil. Community leaders put down on paper the numbers needed to build and begin this community retirement home. The cost hovered around a million dollars. The monies to build this facility would have to come from three different arenas. Number one, a grant from the U.S. Housing, Education, and Welfare Department. And in that, we had Senators Hubert Humphrey and Eugene McCarthy who championed the cause. 
We also needed pledges from people in the community. And also the Red River Valley Synod Board of Charities was willing to invest. It was decided that 200,000 would have to be raised through pledges to indicate to the federal government that this project had the backing of the community. A steering committee then in 1962 included Mel Soderberg, Earl King, Reverend Nelson, Reverend Anderson of Lake Park, P.A. Norum, who was of the chamber, and Carl Buck Jr. of the Lakes uh, Industrial Development Corporation. In April of 62, committees were also taking shape. The campaign committee was chaired by Dr. W.C. Dodds and vice chair was A.R. Johnson, who was the mayor. Others on the committee included Dr. Rogsted, Mel Soderberg, and Parnell Sanford. Robert Irvine and Mayor Johnson co-chaired the solicitations divisions. They included John Pearson, who was the chair of the major gifts, Dr. Dwayne Wething, who was the chair of the advanced gifts, and Mel Soderberg, Richard Blanding, Wayne Lance, and Omar Adams, with 20 others, were chair of the general gifts, and Wally Kirshner was in charge of getting the area towns to be allies. The campaign headquarters were housed in the building of formerly Burgeon's Floral Shop at 916 Washington Avenue. The telephone number was VI74421. There was also a professional fundraiser hired to orchestrate the entire campaign, and the pledges were made for over a three-year period. Our kickoff campaign then was May 2nd of 1962. The campaign began with $30,367 in pledges, and that was announced at a meeting at the Erie 34 Club. Mayor Johnson commented, no community has a larger heart than Detroit Lakes. In April, the first Community Follies was held to the delight of many. Twelve organizations participated and made performances patterned after TV shows. In June, KDLM, which was managed by Dave Knudsen, had a four-hour talkathon. Volunteers made a sweep of the community to gather pledges, and all results were brought to the campaign headquarters and announced on the air that Thursday night. B. Wisted arranged various music to play throughout the event, and KDLM employees, including sports announcer Ken Lawrence, program manager Lee Weston, morning announcer John Moline, and evening announcer Bill Wilson Jr., all pitched in to make it a captivating night. Also in June, participants were given tags to read. I support the retirement center. Do you? Earl Grabo Incorporated made the news when employees each donated $100 to the project. And Swift and Company posted that 100% of their employees donated to the cause. An 81-year-old woman who was caring for her son confined to a wheelchair wanted to make a small donation with the comforting hope that now her son would be cared for after she was gone. An elderly man came to the campaign headquarters and said, I want to help. He pledged 50 cents a week for a total of $18. It might have been a modern-day widow's mite story. But it also reminded each person in the community that as the donations are given in proportion to the ability to give, the goal will be reached. By the end of June 1962, 53% of the goal had been reached. Less than 10% of the prospects declined. At the end of the campaign, it was noted that one of every three persons in Becker County participated. There were celebrations at many large gifts, but it was the average citizen contributing five to $100 that made the difference. The Detroit Lakes Water and Light employees raised over $100, which at that time would have fed a family of four for a month. The comment was made, those people committed part of their weekly paychecks to a facility they might not use, but their neighbor might need it, and it had to be ready. The Detroit Lakes Retirement Home was well on its way to be a reality, one pledge at a time.